Are you struggling with your squat mobility? Would you like to be able to squat deeper without having to always use a slant board to get yourself down deep into a squat? Then today's video is going to be for you. My name's Greg with sportsrealexpert.com and we help people dealing with pain get back to fitness, sports, and activities that they enjoy doing without all the nonsense. Today we're gonna to be covering a simple hip mobility routine that you can do to start loosening up those hips if the hip is your limiting factor with the squat. Newsflash, not always the hip that is the limiting factor in the squat, but oftentimes the hip is a big component of being able to squat deeper, especially if you require using that slant board all the time. So we're gonna start basic and work our way from here. So one of the simple exercises or stretches you can do for better hip mobility to improve your hip flexion, which this is the direction you need to go to be able to squat deep, is hip flexion. So closing this angle right here. Now what a lot of people will do when they do this sort of stretch is when they pull their knees to their chest, you'll see the butt and tailbone curl under. That's not maximizing the stretch of the squat position because uh, you're essentially stretching yourself into what would be considered a butt wink in a squat. So we want to keep a flat back position. We actually want a little bit of anterior pelvic tilt or nutation of the sacrum, which means I'm gonna try to tilt my pelvis or belly button down and forward here. So I'm going to go from here to more of this position right here. So again, tilting my pelvis that away as I pull the knees to my chest and I'm gonna keep that pressure down and not lose it as I pull my knees up. I'm gonna keep that pressure down and play a tug of war battle as far as bringing my knees as close to my chest as I can without losing my sacrum or tailbone down to the ground. Now, a lot of people when they do this, they'll make the mistake of arching their upper back. This is, this is not moving your pelvis. This is moving your rib cage. The back and your shoulder blades and rib cage should stay flat on the ground as you tilt your pelvis. So again, it's the belly buttoning going that away that you need to learn. Hold on to that as you bring your knees to your chest. And the goal here would be able to do this with a fairly narrow stance. You can work your legs out wider and play around with some different angles here. But again, I'm thinking about keeping that pelvis position the whole entire time as I'm prying my knees in and out. And if you get it right, you should feel a nice stretch. Go high up in the hamstrings into the lower glute area. Um, you might feel some general pressure into the hips, but it should be reasonable. You don't want anything extreme or sharp as you're working through that. Next up is applying that position in a rock back position. So a lot of people, when they sit their butt towards their heels, they're gonna dump under. That's not what we're looking for again here. We're looking to kind of maintain that flat spine here. So again, my belly button, I'm thinking about bringing it down towards my thighs as I sit my butt to the heels. Again, I'm not flaring through my upper back here. My upper back stays still and I'm just moving at the belly button and holding that as I sit back. Again, if you get it right and you keep your body horizontal with the floor, you should feel a stretch in the same area, upper hamstring, lower glute. You might feel a little bit of pressure at the hips. That's okay. Um, but you should not feel your low back uh, having an excessive amount of pressure. And so I'm just gonna spend time in this deep position. Again, I can play around with the width of my knees as I go through this. So going about two fists width apart, trying to get that narrow position to even wider yet. And just playing in those couple ranges. Again, spend about a minute on the floor, minute here, and then the next one is single leg. So this is a cowboy resting posture, it's often referred to, um, from a side view or here. Um, you're gonna get a big stretch in this downside leg, but I actually wanna focus on this up leg because that's the position of a squat again. So if I flip around here, this way, what I again wanna think about doing is not dumping under. I wanna think about bringing my butt back and belly button down towards the floor. So it's this position right here. And again, I should feel that same stretch occurring. And then the more of an ankle stretch I can get out of that, the more that's gonna also relate to your squat. 
So again, should feel here. In general, pressure in the front of the hip needs to be reasonable, but you're not, again, dunking under. You're keeping that butt back, tailbone and pelvis pointed forward and down towards my heel. This is the direction I'm thinking about rotating, not here. So after we do that on both sides, we're gonna take it down to a, or we're gonna go up to standing and do a forward bend or a forward toe touch. So the same rules apply here. When I bend over, I don't wanna just fold down without paying attention to what my hips are doing. Again, I wanna think about bringing my belly button down and pushing my butt back. So again, I get a stretch back to the high hamstring uh, in lower glute. Now, if you can touch the floor easily without, with, while maintaining that posture and a straighter knee, then you, you probably don't need to be doing these stretches. The hip might not actually be your limiting factor in the squat. Um, but a lot of people who, when they, they toe touch, they look like a candy cane where they're stuck here, or if they bend their knees, uh, their butt and their knees can't straighten back. That's the person who, again, we gotta work on getting this sort of action where the butt goes up to the ceiling, belly button comes down, my weight shifts back behind me, and I hold that stretch for 20 to 30 seconds, maybe even upwards of a minute. And you can even add a cross leg position to wind that up and bias one hip even further. And again, think about kind of pushing tailbone up to the ceiling, belly button down towards the thighs. I'm getting that anterior tilt mutation as I reach towards the floor, hold for 20 seconds upward of a minute, repeat on both sides. So give these exercises a shot if you're constantly dealing with a butt wink at a parallel squat position. Butt winking down here is not a problem. This is a resting posture. This is not an issue of butt winking down this low. The amount of hip flexion that I'm in there is pretty significant. So um, don't worry about butt winking at the bottom. It's here that we're trying to squat and load through. And if you're struggling maintaining this position, then look at the hip. And notice my knee really isn't that far over top of my toes. So a lot of people blame the ankles and the ankles aren't as big of a limiting factor as you would think. Look at my thigh relative to my torso, how much hip flexion is necessary to be able to perform a deep squat. We have to be able to get those thighs to the chest without the butt rolling up. That's your key. Apply it to a bunch of different postures. Spend time in those positions and watch your squat improve. If you're looking for more specific help dealing with hip pain, knee pain, low back pain, and you're trying to get back in the weight room or trying to get back to sports, email me, greg at sportsrehabexpert.com. I'll design a specific workout for your limitations, or you can head to Sports Rehab Expert. We have a bunch of pre-planned programs that you can also try. And if you found today's video helpful, please like and subscribe down below to help support the channel. If you have questions or videos you'd like to see in the future, always be sure to drop them in the comment section below. I'll put it in the queue to make a video about that as soon as possible.